Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Stanislav Bernikov and I'm a full-time professional trader with more than 10 years of experience. I will be a host in this webinar where I'm going to share with you some interesting information concerning trading. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below this video. Enjoy! Let's get started. This webinar is the second in a series of two webinars titled Price Action and Chart Trading. The goal of this webinar is to help you improve your skills in chart trading and apply technical analysis. We will continue talking about specific patterns and trading setups that are visible on a naked price chart. It can be used without any indicators or with indicators, it's up to you. All ideas discussed in this webinar were somehow used for trading either for me or students of my educational groups, so they have practical application and they are based on trading experience. Now we are getting started. First of all, let's take a quick look at the disclaimer. Please be aware of financial risk associated with trading. Information in this webinar is provided for educational purposes only and by no means can serve as a trading or investment advice. You will have full responsibility for your trading decisions, so we strongly encourage you to test any ideas or concepts on a simulator or using a historical backtest before putting real money at risk. Before we start talking about price action, about analysis, about chart trading, you have to remember that price action for smaller time frames will be different from price action for larger time frames because we have more conflicting information when we trade within a day so we can rely more on levels once we have a level we can get confirmation from the price that the level is being broken out or the level is being rejected and we have not so much variety of setups here and in the left column you see a few setups you see initiative break and you see the test or the probe. Of course, they can be represented in many forms, but actually we have two major setups. We have initiative break or we have a test. But the main thing here is a level or a trade location. Once we have a good trade location, we can confirm our scenario with certain price action. And when we have larger time frames, we have more setups because the information on larger time frames is more relevant. And in this webinar, we will discuss here such patterns as simple correctional pattern, engulfing pattern, pin bar, inside bar, measuring bar with elongation. We will go through some charts. I will show you ideas for trades. I will show you trades that were made in the past and I hope that you will get pretty clear understanding of how it works. And let's start with a very simple setup that can be viewed on small time frames like 30 minute charts or hourly charts. It can be also viewed on daily charts or even weekly charts sometimes, but when you employ this pattern on small time frames, you can achieve the best profit loss ratio. First of all, we have to see initiative action beyond some important reference point or important level. Initiative action occurs when we have price emerging from current trading range. It is inside out action. We see the price getting away from the value, getting away from the trading range. And initiative break occurs when we see candlestick or bar closing at its high or low on the outer side of the level like it is shown here on this slide. In most cases you expect to see preliminary action with reduced volatility, sequence of doji bars and doji candlesticks. It can be two or three hours of consolidation before market breaks and then you have to see initiative break. For example, if you see the candlestick with 
the shadow with the shadow it doesn't mean that you have an initiative break because in this case you have pretty aggressive responsive action so the very important principle using this setup is to see no pressure from sellers in case price breaks to the upside and no pressure from buyers in case it breaks out to the downside market advertises higher or lower and faces no responsive action this is very important because when you see responsive action you see the pin bar for example it doesn't mean that you have an initiative break and once you see no responsive action you can work with this opportunity you can use this to build an asymmetric trade with expectation of good risk reward ratio once you have identified initiative break you can build an area of support around the exact bar or candlestick that was breaking the level in this particular example we have the breakout to the upside with this candlestick and we can build a position on a pullback for example well nobody will tell you exactly how deep the pullback will be but you can buy for example on 50 percent retracement from from the initiative action from the initiative candlestick this is the first way to do that and eventually you can just buy after it closes and set your stop loss below the low of this initiative bar or initiative candlestick once this area is violated market is becoming too weak and odds are stacking against your position and they are stacking against continuation so you can get rid of your position and search for a next pattern on this slide you see the particular example of the trade that was made on my account recently it is euro versus british pound you see first of all the trade location represented in a red line here market has broken out the trade location or the level with a candlestick of a very small body the next bar or next candlestick is testing the area of the support and we have two more opportunities to enter on the 50% retracement here every pullback here allows us to build a position with good parameters of profit loss ratio well it is too good to be true right but not it's an actual real trade also you have a very tight stop here very tight stop here and you can be stopped out of this trade and exit a position in case price breaks the support area to the downside and you see that the continuation within a day was pretty good so we had a trending day with elongation to the upside and uh, it was about 4 to 1 profit loss ratio or maybe 5 to 1 profit loss ratio I don't remember exactly and this is a good example of the trade and the example that you see on this slide is pretty similar with minor differences you see that price tests higher levels with several candlesticks and what candlestick is considered to be the initiative break well, why is the third one better than the second one or the first one well to identify the real initiative break we should go to the higher time frame and see what happens there if we see any meaningful extreme we just build a level using this extreme and identify the real initiative break because the action within a trading range is relatively less important than action outside of trading range because when price goes or moves within a trading range it can be the result of algorithmic trading of mechanical trading it can be result of day trading whatever but once price breaks out from the level possibly other time frame buyer will enter the game in this example we see that initiative activity had started from inside of the range the low of the candlestick representing the initiative break 
does not correspond to the local high. So the area of support slightly overlaps the previous trading range. And you shouldn't be surprised observing the minor pullback within a range like it is shown here. It can give you really the opportunity to enter the market, to enter the trade. And area of support works pretty accurately here. Now let's look how it works on real chart. I want you to pay attention on the recent activity from American dollar versus Japanese yen. As you already know, before putting any trade, we have to identify market conditions. And in this case, first, the market was ready to generate movements to both sides of the trading range to collect liquidity, to collect stops, and after that it was starting to validate higher levels. It is preparing possibly for the breakout or for more elongated movement. Well, it can be <coughs> both to the upside or to the downside. We don't know the exact destination. And the first thing that we see here is additional structure building at the top of this range. And the key day is here... Key day that we see here is November 4th. <coughs> Let me do it larger for you. Okay, so, sorry, here is this day. You see that initiative break occurs with this candlestick. And after that we just build the support area. And we have several opportunities to enter the market on 50% retracement here. And eventually market prepares for the break. You see that here we have completely reduced volatility. Volatility is very small. It is preparation for the breakout and market is going from the paradigm shift area to the impulse phase. And here you see another example from Australian dollar versus Japanese yen. And first of all you see the pretty long sideways action here lasting for about three weeks. It had started here on October 23rd. Then we have several weeks of sideways action. And eventually market has broken out the 88 level that is considered to be the trade location for a breakout momentum trade here. And also, it's not only the previous day's high that is being broken, but also the border of the large trading range that is being broken. <clears throat> so we are breaking out two levels simultaneously. First of all, it is an extreme of the previous day, and it is also the higher border of the large trading range. And you see that here we have the initiative break that is the exact candlestick or exact bar that we can rely on building the support area. What do we see here? November 19th we have a test and market goes higher, it closes higher. Then the action develops within November 20, November 23rd and November 24th we see again the pullback to this area again the pullback and guess what is the level that supports the price that is the support area built by the initiative candlestick you see how it works so we can even build a position after the three or four days of the sideways action now uh, well this position looks pretty good in history right but in the real time it will be not very psychologically easy to execute such position because you have a descending movement and you are going to go counter trend. And that's why in my trading I try to enter a position within the short term period. Once market breaks out, breaks out a level, I can enter the first pullback and after 
three or four days of the action I might not enter the position because it's pretty risky here but of course it looks good here in this trade if you are a risky trader you can if you can go counter trend here if you can afford a small loss here in case you are not right you will get very very good trade having more than 5 to 1 profit loss ratio here and also keep in mind that the next time market breaks this level or touches this level odds are stacking against you but in fact also you ha we have a test and eventually market generates the elongated movement to the upside so you see how it works I will show you just it on a daily chart it, it is visible also on a daily chart you see how this level works three times we have three times of market coming to this level testing this level before it breaks and you might uh, you might ask why not to build a trading range using this extreme well I would say that we have to pay attention to the levels that are located or extremes that are located around one level so the higher level the higher extreme is excessive one so we might not pay attention to this extreme extremes that are important for us they lean to 88 level but what if we pay attention to Australian dollar versus American dollar I have shown you Australian versus Japanese yen in the previous example but as for Australian dollar versus American dollar itself you see that you also have a level but it is not as good because it is located right in the center of the range so you don't have any meaningful extremes here what do I call the meaningful extreme I call the meaningful extreme that also lies somewhere at the border of the range here we have just a sideways action if we switch to 30 minute chart we also see some extremes but it's not elongated structure so we have just two weeks of sideways action with pretty high volatility here well it might be the rotational center located right in the center of the range but if I have to choose between two setups I would choose Australian versus Japanese yen because it looks better I, I have much better structure here much better setup okay now let's switch to the next setup that I call the test or the probe before market is ready to move in opposite direction and reverse it can generate a test to the direction of the previous short-term trend so even if you see any reversal pattern even if you have good trade location and market has already started to move in the direction of your forecast or analysis it can go back test the area or level and then resume going in the direction of the previous break and a typical example of the probe or the test you can see on this slide first we see the market breaking out to the downside we have two trending days with two days of sideways action followed on the third day we have pretty good level pretty decent level here and before market is ready to break out to the downside it has to generate a test so we see the level and we see that our market condition is pretty bearish here but before market is ready to go it just tests and validates the level it looks if there is a hidden demand here once it is clear that there is no demand here market is ready to go down in this example we have a pretty good trend in context market was leaning to the lower side of the chart before it was building the trading range it, it, it is possibly a four-day balance and correctional move has followed so we can start to think about 
going against this trend. But to do so, we have to see the level. We have to see the level and we have to see the test. Once we see the small area of consolidation, once we see the good level, we have to see the test. Well, the test is typically the shadow, maybe 5 to 10 ticks above the level. And it is obvious pretty quickly that there is no continuation here. And then market is ready to go to the opposite direction. So you can initiate a trade here or even here if you are a risky trader. So you can enter in the point one or enter in the point two, which is less risky. Now let's look how it works on the real charts. Uh, I want to show you example from New Zealand dollar because it has very good trend in context. We had market renewing lows, setting new lows consistently and correctional move has followed here and the day of false breakout is November 20 and let's look in more detailed mode how it works let's go to November 20 and see what happens here so here is the border of the range market goes higher establishes uh, establishes the candlestick here and a small shadow. It might be considered as an initiative break but actually it's not an initiative break because we have pretty aggressive pressure from the upside. So using this trade location we can initiate a short trade to move to the downside or if you can reduce your risk you can even place a stop loss place sorry a stop order sell stop order here to generate a trade. Well, in this case your profit will be smaller. We don't know whether the market is going to visit lowest low here because the most expected profit here is the center of the range. So our projected target can lie in the center of the range and it has to be a mean reversion trade when we trade using the mean reversion we expect that the market goes back to the center of the range but we don't know whether the market is going to get back to the lowest side of the range now let's talk about patterns for higher time frames we can pay more attention to specific candlestick or bar configurations in this case because information is already filtered in this time frame and the best way to trade using any patterns is to work within an impulse phase when the market is going away from value very quickly generating very small correctional moves so we can capture the breakout momentum trade using one of these correctional movements you can even build a moving average here like I was showing you in previous webinars but as price is going away from value, you might not see the test of any moving average, either fast or slow. Eventually, market can re-enter the trade location between two moving averages, but in an impulse phase, it is just going away and it is a very quick process. So your trades are expected to be made with locations shown here. So you guess that those trades can be a breakout momentum trades. There are a few rules for identifying good opportunity using simple correctional pattern. The first is to see sequence of descending bars of candlesticks going one after another. Of course, if your initial impulse was ascending. You have two to three bars or candlesticks moving against the trend and it is better when the last bar in this correctional phase will show you participation of buyers <coughs> for example it can be shown in a form of a pin bar the candlestick or a bar with very long shadow and a very small body and your entry point is considered to be executed just above 
the high of the spin bar. In many cases you can see minor elongation and the market will show you another two to three days or maybe four days of consolidation but in an active trend market is about to grow faster when you initiate a trade it can grow faster renewing highs or at least revisiting highs very quickly your stop loss is expected to be placed below this pattern yet there are several ways to place a stop and we will dedicate special webinar to this topic for the short trade it works the opposite way so you see one two maybe three bars against the initial movement and you place a sell stop order be below the low of the pin bar and you go with the breakout momentum trade well example shown here is in inappropriate for trading of course it can work in some cases but our goal is to accept best setups and stack the odds in our favor here we don't see participation of buyers because the last candlestick in this sequence is not showing any participation market just reacts on achieved level and there is not enough reason to enter trade here but when we combine simple correctional pattern with engulfing pattern it can improve the odds if the last bar in this correctional phase was not showing any participation of buyers we can still initiate a trade in case engulfing pattern shows up if the third candlestick in this configuration engulfs the second one you can place your buy stop order here and initiate a trade of course in case uh, in case the distance between high and your entry point is not too short here is an example of how it works market breaks from the trading range pretty aggressively then pulls back and once we see engulfing pattern we can enter a trade to capture a continuation remember that it will work better on charts of higher time frames it is very important to mention that we have to work with active trending impulse if we haven't seen any highs and swing was completed within a range we can't pay attention to any engulfing patterns in this case all setups and patterns occurring within a balance are of less importance than those occurring outside of balance in this example you see that even if we have correctional move even if we have engulfing pattern but we don't have new high established so this pattern cannot be used for trading now let us look uh, at the recent example of Swiss franc or the American dollar versus Swiss franc and we see that once price had emerged from the trading range let us see it in more detailed mode we have observed simple correctional pattern here we have one two three one two three correctional bars of candlesticks with engulfing pattern followed so entering here or even here we have pretty good odds of entering a good trade well of course your stops are expected to be at, a, at a quite a distance be because it is a daily chart but your expectation of reward increases here so it is not a short-term trade it is more long-term okay now we are finishing this webinar I hope that it was interesting for you and some ideas will be used in your trading in the next webinar we will talk about preparation for the trading day and the balance between supply and demand key reference points that trader has to keep in mind if you have questions or comments to this video feel free to leave them below and I will do my best to answer all of your questions please be specific in your questions to receive a good answer good luck and see you in the next video